everybody welcome back to my channel um i don't know if i'm talking quite low but it's because i have baba literally right here that you can't see but you can see the blanket um he's currently sleeping so um i can't be too too loud um happy new year basically i know it's been a long time since i've actually posted anything up on my channel and that was mainly because i was pregnant and i was i didn't really have the greatest pregnancy um so i was just like demotivated to just do any sort of youtube videos um as you can tell by the title of this video this video is quite a tough video to record oh my gosh i can start to feel myself getting emotional which is weird because Normally when I talk about this to other people, I don't get emotional. Um, and I didn't ever think I'll get emotional on camera. <laughs> um, but like I said, as you can see by the title of the video, um, this video is about the fact that my son, um, his name's Ezra, um, has the sickle cell anemia disease. Um, so oh my gosh i'm trying so hard not to cry um basically i'm doing this video because i feel as though there's not that much out there on youtube for young parents that are basically going through what me and my partner are going through and um, I would say when I was obviously on YouTube and I was trying to find stuff before I gave birth to him, obviously I'll, I'll tell you kind of a backstory of how I kind of found out, but before I gave birth to him, when I was trying to find videos and stuff, there were, there were videos, um, a lot of people were obviously older, still talking about themselves and the fact that they have the disease there wasn't that many parents talking about their newborn having the disease and what they went through and how what they do to cope with it um so i'm putting this out there and i'm gonna so you guys can start the journey with me on how to look after a newborn with sickle cell disease um also there's not a lot of uk based videos a lot of them was american videos or american parents if there was one or american people and there's not a lot of black parents from the uk that talk about it so i felt it's only necessary to put a video up there to help someone else who is in my position or who could be in my position looking for something and looking for answers um so currently um Ezra is three weeks old so if we if I if I just go a bit back um I have sickle cell trait so um in the sickle cell community it's called um they would class me as a carrier um from the beginning of my life from when I was able to acknowledge that I had sickle cell I knew I had sickle cell not sickle cell disease but I was a sickle cell carrier my mum pushed it I would say made me and my sister who also has it um very aware of what sickle cell was and what me having a trait would mean so um that being said i was very aware of what sickle cell was and what it would mean if i was to be with someone that had sickle cell this uh, has to be with someone else who either had sickle cell or was also a carrier like myself um, as my mum obviously had it, my mum was a carrier, my dad wasn't, which meant that me and my sister were both carriers, but my brother isn't, so it, which, which is weird, um, so anyway, I'm trying my hardest not to babble, so obviously me and my partner have basically been together for eight years now, and, um, I had always kind of made it clear to him and spoken to him about the fact that I'm a sickle cell carrier and um, I think my mum told me to ask him whether or not he was so um, 
oh, if you can hear snoring that is Ezra little three week old is snoring his life away oh, it took me so long to get him to sleep because he's got colic oh, that's another story my mum just told me one day to ask Courtney who my, that's my partner um does he have the disease? I mean, does he have a trait? So I adamantly said no, because I've spoken to him about it so many times and he's never ever said anything about it. So um, this was a few years back. Um, he asked his mum whether or not he had a trait or not, whether or not he had a sickle cell trait. And um, his mum said no. So um, we continued living the rest of our life like we did. Um, I remember going to my midwife appointment, my first midwife appointment at, I don't know, it wasn't 12 weeks, but I think it was eight weeks. Eight week midwife appointment. Um, they just asked you loads and loads of questions about you, your partner. Um, and my partner couldn't come at that time. So I think I went with my mum. And I remember my mum saying, um, I remember them asking me, oh, do, um, do you or your partner have the sickle cell disease or traits i said well i'm a trait but he isn't um so obviously in that first initial appointment they take all your bloods to obviously do all these type of blood tests so they know what your pregnancy is going to be like and they can tell if there's any sort of issues in your blood before you get further into your pregnancy so um they offered me obviously all my blood tests but then said do you want to get your partner tested so i said automatically no there's no need for him to get tested because he doesn't have the sickle cell trait his mum's told him that he doesn't have the trait so there's no point of him getting test getting tested for it my mum was adamant my mum was like i believe you think um i think courtney should get tested because um it's just good for him to know what his blood group is it's just good for him to just to know all of that kind of information if he doesn't know already and it's just good to have it documented so i was like okay so we arranged an appointment for courtney to go and get um his blood test and um, his blood test done he didn't think anything of it carried on with her normal day lives just being excited about having a baby and then um i would say like two to three weeks later um i remember i was i, I would always remember this i was at work um my phone is literally pinging off just give me a second oh that's my friend it's so crazy because i've literally just told her that um ezra has it so um she's asking questions now but tanya if you're watching <laughs> i'm here recording a video so i'll respond in a minute um but um yeah so Wait, oh yeah, I remember I was at work and um, sitting down on my desk as I do, just banging out work. And then I received a random call, rushed out, obviously you just always go outside. Went outside the office, got the call and um lady just saying, oh, this is, um, my name's da 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 I'm calling from Wooden Spoon, just calling to give you guys the results, to give you the results of your, um, of your partner's test. So I was like, oh, okay um she was just like oh yeah i just wanted to let you know that he's um your, your partner's a trait so i was like i'm sorry she's like yeah your partner is sickle cell trait so i was just like no 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 like i was in such shock that like i didn't know what i, I literally didn't know what to say so she was just like didn't you know i said no but i said um i have a trait as well so she said well that basically means that your child has a one in four chance of catching the full disease um if i have time because i've gone through some sort of counseling stuff they've given me this book that has um pictures so i'm gonna like put up like pictures of the possibilities of um how your child can be affected like how your unborn child can be affected basically so um obviously it was a lot to take in at the time and i think i remember i just started crying on the phone and she was giving me all of this information but i wasn't really taking it in but all i remember her saying is that they offer counseling um and if i wanted to come down and to, um, to call back to arrange an appointment and that um i can get a test as i'm 
um, as I'm currently before 20 weeks pregnant or before 25 weeks pregnant, I can get um, a test done. Um, what, what they do is they obviously put a long needle into your stomach and take some of the amniotic fluid um, from the sac or I think it's either that or they actually pull it into the child. I can't remember how they do it um, because it was something that I chose not to do um, because I just didn't like the idea of it because of the possibilities of um, a miscarriage and other issues as well. So it's kind of like what they do if your child has, if they believe your child could have Down syndrome. Um, so I remember her explaining that to me and I remember automatically thinking that's something I wouldn't do. What will be will be, but I'm going to just continue to pray and hope that he doesn't have it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so obviously I declined the invasive... Um, thing because I just felt to myself that at first I didn't want them to put a needle in my stomach just in case it caused me to miscarry um and secondly because that was something that I was I was so anxious about throughout my whole pregnancy anyway um I just I don't know through my whole pregnancy I just always just had this fear of miscarrying or something going wrong with the pregnancy so that literally totally put me off um and secondly I always said to myself that if there was anything wrong, even if they told me, yeah, your child has sickle cell disease, that wouldn't have changed my way of, that would have made me abort him, basically. They basically give you, they tell you to do it before 20 weeks so you can have an abortion. And that was something that I felt that I wasn't going to do. I didn't agree. I don't, I don't agree with abortions. And obviously each, um, everybody has their reason as to why they want to have an abortion. But that was something that I've always stood by and I would never have an abortion, even if I got pregnant at the age of 15, which I didn't. Um, and even in the situation, if I found out my child had this, um, disease it wouldn't have led me to have an abortion so if that was the if that's the case there's no point of me finding out so they obviously said to me that um okay if you don't find out now what happens is is that once your child is born five at, once he's five days old um they would your midwife would administer administer a heel prick test so i just basically went through my pregnancy just being very optimistic and um just praying and just hoping that he wouldn't have the disease and that he would that he would become a carrier more so he, he had more of a chance of becoming a carrier than he did having the disease so it's one in four like I said I'll put the picture up or I have put the picture up so you guys would know already um but it's a one in four chance so one being that he doesn't have anything um, so 25% he doesn't have anything, another 25% that he um, has the full disease and 50% that um, he's he gets one side from the dad or one side from me, which means that he'll be a carrier. Um, so, yeah, I hope I'm not messing up my makeup. I'm trying my hardest not to... Um mess it up <laughs> but um i remember i was just i was in my room which is this room just sitting down and i receive a call and it's a nurse from hospital well she's a midwife um she called to say that she's got my blood test results so i said okay i feel like at this point even though I knew there was a possibility that he could have it, I, I didn't think he had it. I don't know. It's like it, it's like the possibility was there and I knew it could be there, but I just actually thought she wasn't going to say that he had it. Um, obviously, she told me she had it because of the title of this video. Um, so once again, I just started crying. I couldn't fathom how I was going to look after a child with this disease. And I feel like throughout my whole pregnancy, I just pull it to the back of my head 
and just stayed so optimistic so even though I had felt that I had come to terms with the fact that he could have it I don't think I actually did come to terms with it so it was still so much of a shock when I got that news <sighs> literally I was so upset I had to get my friend um to come and at the time I found out the news my midwife the community midwife was coming to sign me off so it was just all a blur and if you don't know um sickle cell disease mainly affects black african and caribbean people um there are um caucasian people that also have a disease have can also be carriers and also can also have the disease as um i know my sister's met um a white caucasian man that's had it um and it also sometimes affects the asian community as well um but the majority and uh, the the majority of people that are affected are black african and caribbeans um just so you, just so you know sickle cell anemia basically means that firstly the person who's got the disease means that they've got they have i wouldn't say contracted but basically been given the gene because it's genetic um you can't catch it it's all genetic so they have been given the gene from both their their mother and father which makes a whole thing so obviously that's now um means that they've got the whole disease um normally your blood cells look like this i'm gonna put I'm trying to do it right um do a thing um so for someone who has so someone who hasn't has got normal hemoglobin and just is normal their blood cells will look like this so all round shape and um, which means that it can normally flow around the body normally um if you're a, if you have sickle cell disease it means your blood cells look like this um they are a crescent shape and um what that means is that there's not a lot of oxygen that gets into the red blood cells so when it pumps it's when obviously your blood cells get to the lungs where your so how can i put it blood cells normally travel through the body and obviously they go round from the heart and round your body and they go up to the lungs to reoxygenate and then they go back out again but once when you have sickle cell disease your blood cells are already in not that great of a shape so once it gets to the um once it gets to the lungs for them to be for the blood cells to get reoxygenated um it then causes the blood cells to sickle into a different shape because they've already lost a lot of oxygen on the way up there already. This is how someone kind of explained it to me. So he's not automatically born with the sickle blood cell, um, red blood cells, but they do become sickle as the blood cells go through its life expectancy, life expectancy, <laughs> expectancy. Um, so what does this disease do so basically what this means now is because um some of the some of and most of the red blood cells are that crescent shape it means when the cells are trying to get through certain bits of certain joints or um tiny little veins or um little points of the body they become sticky and obviously it causes um, and it could cause a blockage this blockage will then put the person who has the disease into a thing called a crisis which means they get excruciating pain in that part of the body where there is a blockage that could be your elbow your legs your arms your toes your fingers sorry the camera cut off for some reason don't know what that was but yeah your arms your toes your fingers um so um 
that pain is excruciating. So I've heard and um, can lead on to other things. The thing that I don't like about the disease, not, not like there's anything that I actually like about it, but what makes it worse is that um, you don't know how the child is going to be affected until the child is affected. So at the moment, Ezra's not affected because he's still got the fetal haemoglobin running through his body, which means children in the neonatal stage, which means that the newborn stage do not show any signs of the disease for the first three months of life. Once he gets to his third month of life, then that's when we'll have to start treatment. Um, and basically this treatment will be given to him for the rest of his life. Um, and for me, I feel like that's, that's like a hard nut to swallow to know that I've basically got a child with a disability because sickle cell, even though it's not a physical disability in a sense where you can't physically see it on the person, it is a disability because it affects their everyday life and it affects the way thing it affects the way they can do things in not in normal life. And obviously doing all the research that I've done so far which to be fair hasn't been that 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 much because I'm just trying to I don't know I feel like I'm just trying to enjoy him at this stage of his life and not get stressed out about what's to come but I am doing research because I know I need to do research about it um and from what I've found out and from certain videos and stuff that I've seen on YouTube um the main causes to sickle cell crises or sickle cell attacks are change of temperature, um, infection, lack of oxygen and being dehydrated basically. Um, in terms of change of temperature, this could affect him even, this could affect him swimming, this could affect him going on holiday, um, this could affect him coming out of a bath, this could affect him um, I don't know, going to a sauna because the difference, because if where there's a drastic change of temperature that can cause the person to go into crisis um, so all of these little things that we kind of take for granted um, is something that he will have to be careful of um you know like how we'll just throw ourselves into a pool and just think about how cold it is once we're in there if he was to throw himself into the pool and that pool was very very cold he could have an attack at that moment um and for little for things like what it, it kind of puts your mind to a point where like things you wanted to do with your child or things that you thought you could do with your child that you now can't do or have to be careful doing just makes you feel a little bit sad. Oh gosh, literally this is like, my camera just keeps on cutting out, so annoying. Um, this is a journey and I want people to follow me on this journey with me, follow me and Ezra on this journey um, because like I said, there's not that much information out there. And if you guys can learn something from myself, or from me, then um, I feel like I'm helping at least one person out there. Um, even if, yeah, like I said, even if one person re um, watches this um, and gets something from it, that's the main purpose. That's the whole purpose of the reason why I made this channel is to help people. And even though I didn't think my channel will, make t will turn into this this is also just a part of my life that i'm just opening up for the world to see and to hopefully help people that are going through something that me and my family are going through um obviously i'm still at a point where i'm still in a little bit of shock and it's still new to me because it hasn't even been a week since i've known the news 
um, but I just want any mother or father out there going through what I'm going through to know that it's not the end of the world and that we will get through this and that your child will be okay. You just have to stay on top of everything and you just have to realise that you are taking you do have a child with a disability which means that they generally need more care than what a normal not normal but what another child who doesn't have any sort of condition will need so you just have to stay on top of it um in terms of diet in terms of exercise in terms of stuff like that you just have to um his medication or their medication you just have to be on top of it and that's something that i intend to do um this disease will not break me or it will not break Ezra. I tell it, I give him daily affirmations daily anyway to let him know how amazing and how strong he is. And I was saying that before he was he even before he was even diagnosed with sickle cell disease. And I'm gonna continue to let him know that he's strong, he can overcome it, he will live to it as long as he's supposed to live. These people talk about life expectancies being very short with people with people that have sickle cell, but he will not. He, I know, will live longer. I'm going to put this positivity into him, even though it's affecting me now. Trust me, guys. In the next couple of weeks, it won't be affecting me like this. It's just the fact that it's just a hard pill to swallow and you just have to rejiggle everything in your mind um so that's just been a little bit difficult and obviously just to know that you the main thing the worst thing is is just knowing that you can't take that burden from your child all i want to do is just take that disease away from him but i can't i would prefer if i was going through it more so than him like he's just a little baby Hold on, I saw on the screen. Oh yeah, like he's just a little baby, and um, it just kills me to know that he's gonna be affected by something like this, and he's gonna have pain, and that's what makes it worse for me, and that's what makes me upset more so than the fact that he's got the disease, if that makes sense. Guys, I feel like I've literally been babbling and babbling and babbling. Um, but yeah, I just want you all to follow me on this journey um, with Ezra and I'll keep you updated. So once he gets to his three month, um, once he gets to three months and I have more information as to the medication that he'll be on, even though I have a slight, even though I kind of know, but I want to give you guys more in depth version so once he gets his three months and he has that appointment with his consultant and the nurse and the team, um, then I'll do an I'll do a three month update, um, and then we'll take it from there. But um, thank you guys again for coming to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, this channel is not just going to be about my this, my the sickle cell journey of my son. It's also going to involve fashion kids fashion just normal lifestyle stuff basically i don't want to put my channel into a specific bubble i just want it to be about whatever i feel like i want to record and talk about um and put out there to you guys so that's what i'm going to make it about so the sun's about to come out from a cloud and i can't see because it's getting really 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 bright so um i'll leave it there guys and yeah please subscribe and share this video if there's anyone out there that is going through um what i'm going through and that you feel that it will be good for them to um come on the come along on the journey with me um yeah so that's it all right guys bye bye thank you for watching oh no hold on before i go he's sleeping and the sun's in my eyes but um let me see if i can show you him gosh i'm, I'm trying to trying to pick him up without um this is Ezra, guys. Say hello. <laughs> He's still sleeping. But yeah. He's still sleeping. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. And from me and Ezra, bye. Love you, Baba.
love you.